beautiful. So we're recording, it's gonna to go to the cloud um, and we are having attendees joining. Hey, David, Christy, Sarah, John, George. Oh, wow, we're having, uh, we're having now 15 attendees who joined already. Wow, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. So where are you calling in from, Brian? I'm calling in from Toronto, actually just east of Toronto in Ajax. Nice. Uh, and I'm as well in Toronto, Canada, um, <laughs> downtown and College Park. Um, I'm all blocked. Last webinar, people told me, dude, put your blinds on, just getting <laughs> blasts of light so you can see it. But we are here in Toronto. Where are you guys calling in from? Let us know in, in the comment section. Um, where is the comment section? Let me just do this on. Turn this. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Awesome. We keep getting comments. Austin, Texas. Beautiful. Hey, Sarah. Oh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Wow. Okay, that's cool. <clears throat> also, we have New York here in the, in the house. Hi, John. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Beautiful, beautiful to see people from, from all, around the, all around the world. Well, basically, I'm still expecting to see someone from Europe, um, India, China. <laughs> we used to have people from all over the place. Um, and I'm a Brit. That's cool to hear. Hey, Sarah. Yeah, so we have California. Christy? Hey, Christy, cheers from Toronto. It's not as hot as in California, but we are getting there. What's, what's, what's the weather outside, uh, Brian? Man, I don't know, but I'll take whatever we got now compared to what we had just in the beginning of the week because it was absolutely cold. <laughs> it was absolutely cold. And you see, I yeah, just want to, yeah. So I actually want to talk about one, one thing, just get the elephant out of the room. Yeah. You know, Canada is not always cold. First of all, it's a huge country, okay? So Toronto is, is not as cold as we get in the North, you know, like mm -hmm. speaking of Montreal, Quebec City, like I'm not gonna get into that, but um, the winter does last long. Mm. So that's the only thing. And I'm speaking from, from a guy who, who, who came to Canada three and a half years ago. So, yeah. um, so we have Matt from Buffalo, oh, neighbor hey, almost. Um, awesome. So uh, we're gonna give you guys a few more minutes. Uh, let's see, who do we have here? Okay, so we have about 25 people now who joined. Um, and, you know, we're gonna, it's gonna take us like probably 35 minutes to go over the content, and then we're gonna go uh, into, into a discussion. Uh, but before we get into that, Brian, I think um, there's, you know, there's a few sentences to, to, to be said about mm -hmm. um, the, the, the topic of today's webinar. And I mean, I'm not gonna get into the negatives, like our world is changing quite drastically. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of us are working at the comfort of our home. I was actually just talking to a friend of mine from Chicago and uh, she said that she started working a month ago from, from her offices. Uh, but we're still, you know, working from home. Um, and, and I think things are drastically going to change. Hence, um, all these tools and techniques that we can deploy uh, um, for the comfort of our home are super important. So Brian and I, we kind of already went through this webinar a few times uh, and we decided it's actually gonna be a super cool to do it for his uh, Startup Tech Unleashed. Um, so yeah, Brian, like, uh, w like what, what would be your kind of intro sentence in the power of, of sales email? Well, I mean, to be honest, at the end of the day, I mean, everyone gets bombarded with emails and it's really trying to figure out how you can get your message to really break through the, all the noise that's out there. I mean, how can you have the, your impact? How can you have your copy or your, you're mentioning before, your subject matter pop? What can you do to get your email opened? I mean, I think Vlad, we've had conversations many, many, many times based on that. And I think that's right. some of the most important things you can have because you can have great copy and everything, but if they don't open the email, then you're, you're kind of out of luck. 100%, 100%. And, and it, there's like a lot to be said on that. And I think we're going to cover pretty much uh, most of the questions that you, that you, um, uh, you know, that you just mentioned. And, and you know, I, I can't wait to, to start. So, uh, you know, without further ado, we're gonna let people join in and we're gonna record the webinar. So uh, it's, um, it's you guys are gonna get the, the recording after this. Uh, but I'm gonna start with just a quick intro introduction. I usually, I typically hate, you know, when people say, tell me more about you, you know, because there's, you know, uh, you can say a little, you can say too much. And so, so basically, you know, I, I, like I said, I came to Canada to build my first startup three and a half years ago, uh, then moved on to a second 
that turns out to be, uh, you know, top 50 sales products in, in 2020 on G2 Crowd. Uh, prior to that, in Europe, I was managing a sales force when I was 26 of 100 people uh, working with uh, Cisco Systems, Samsung, uh, like really big comp companies in the DAC region. And if we have anyone from, from Germany, Switzerland, or Austria, I don't speak German. So I managed to do sales in English. Okay, so uh, that's a little bit about me. You can connect with me on LinkedIn um, and, uh, and send me an email at any point in time. Um, Brian, off to you. Well, oh, geez, I, I would definitely say my, my history is definitely vast. If you ever have a chance to get a, a look at my LinkedIn profile, you know what? I came to, I actually moved to Toronto after running a business in Montreal in sales and marketing for a number of years. And you know what? I wanted to change, came here, launched a business and you know what? You had your ups and downs. Um, and you know what? I've been in print and marketing for over 25 years, decided to change my industry. Uh, I would say about in 2014, we launched a, a technology product and you know what? We weren't successful, but what we learned along the way is there, there's a lot of things you don't know along along your path. And one of the things that we didn't know was, um, you know, the, the power of your network. And in 2016, we launched actually a growth driver, not growth driver, but sorry, but uh, Startup Tech Unleashed. And that was our for foray of not wanting to lose our contacts. And it started off as a little coffee group that kind of grew and grew and grew to a point right now we're about 16,000 members. We're in Ontario, Quebec, and Western New York. And then just this past year, we, I mentioned before Growth Driver IO, that was actually just a foray, our, our next extension of our next product. And that's one of the reasons we like uh, dealing with Autoclose so much. And we decided to partner with you guys because we love what you guys are doing directly for us when it comes down to sequencing and sending out outreach. So that's one of the reasons for sitting down today and sharing this information with everybody that's on this webinar today. Beautiful. <clears throat> and so, pardon me, I was... Uh, I was having too many almonds, okay? <laughs> um, okay, so some housekeeping or expectations for, for, this, uh, for this webinar. Uh, basically, I want you guys to really participate, to join in. So from time to time, I'm gonna call out Brian to, to comment on the topics. So this is not prepared, rehearsed, or anything of that sort. This is real things, you know, the real stuff that we do every day, so we kind of know it by heart. Um, and, and also, like, I wanna set the expectation. This is going to be like a almost kind of geeky uh, webinar where we're going to talk a little bit about the technical stuff and we're going to be talking about, you know, some spam traps and, 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 you know, and, and, you know, what's the real power that you guys get with, uh, with sequencing and, and touch points and all these crazy networks that we have out there. So we have LinkedIn, we have email, we have phone, we have voicemail, we have SMS, we have so many different things and people are getting bombarded. And there's a reason why they're getting bombarded and why most of the customers and, and if, even yourself, if you put yourself in the shoe of a customer, like why, why you're pushing back so hard on, on all these prospects. And we're going to talk about that. So I want you guys to, to interrupt me at any point in time, just, uh, just, Keep on writing the, the the you know comments and and you know if you agree disagree with something it's all open uh, so use use spot to to kind of um, you know engage uh, and and take the most out of this webinar. Um, so, and the, the agenda for today is basically, why should I care? You know, why, do you, why should you care about email automation and, uh, and generally uh, touch points? Um, and what does it mean? Uh, then the marketing email versus sales email outreach, I get asked, like, if you wouldn't imagine how many times uh, VPs of sales, you know, like uh, directors, um, uh, COOs, et cetera, are asking me, okay, so what is the difference, you know, between, I don't know, like MailChimp, you know, and we love MailChimp. We use MailChimp, but it's a mar that's marketing. Uh, but then also there's their sales email outreach and you can automate that. And what's the difference, right? Um, how to write the perfect email sequence. Yeah, a little bit uh, salesy, but generally we're going to give you some tools, tips and tricks on how to get to as nearly as perfect email sequence to generate results um, and how to build a targeted data list because you know if you data is your fuel so if you don't have if you don't have the right data the right prospects I mean uh, you know there's there's uh, not a lot of use in in, in sequences um, and here you can just see one of my one of my sequences that I just used you can see on the left hand side that I don't have hundreds of thousands of people in my uh, in my campaign but I actually only have 32 because I'm highly targeted and guess what the results I'm getting, you know, 100% open rate, 31% click rate and 38% reply rate. So I'm gonna show you that uh, exact sequence later uh, and we're gonna go over it. Now, 
you know, the, the shift in sales and, and the shift in the sales process that we're all experiencing uh, is, is, you know, we went all the way from, you know, the madman age even before that, you know, the door knocking. And as a matter of fact, when I, when I first came to, to Canada, I was, I was asked to do door knocking for, for Bell. Uh, which, uh, you know, I always knew that I'm a techie. So, uh, so, you know, I was like, nah, this is not for me really. Uh, and I love connecting to people, you know, like, and I love, I enjoy one-to-one -one relationships, um, but, uh, but just door knocking wasn't for me because I knew there are so many other things that you could do uh, to, um, to succeed in sale. And so then, you know, like this, this goes back to, to the individual prospecting and then people were just you know, damn focused on cold calling, like, let's just do as many cold calls as possible, you know, um, you know, just sit there and, you know, you know, smile and dial and, and all that kind of movement. Uh, and then we moved to, to kind of inbound marketing and actually kind of creating different content pieces um, in different points of the buying uh, cycle uh, to, to actually meet the criteria of our buyers. You know, like if you're just, for instance, if you're looking for email automation, you're going to first Google what the hell is email automation or what's the definition. So you're going to go, you know, further on down the funnel um, and, and we as a business should serve you with right content. And then we came to sales automation. So you can see a lot of companies out there, you know, such as Outreach, uh, AutoClose, uh, you know, there's their sales loft. There's, there's even like Pipedrive, HubSpot, Salesforce. They're all in a way moving from their, uh, uh, kind of pivotal businesses, which was a CRM towards a more kind of sales automation so that you guys spend more time talking to people instead of, um, instead of uh, actually spending uh, uh, time on mundane tasks and, uh, and um, inputting data, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what I believe is going to be the future of sales um, is, is a self-serve or extreme personalization, how I call it. Um, now, more and more, you know, people are now forced to take Zoom. They're forced to go on LinkedIn and make that relationship. They're forced to do so many things. And I don't think that's going to change, such as, as Simon Sinek said a few few weeks ago, like, I mean, we're not going back to normal. There's no normal. There's a new normal and things might change, but like, there's no going back. I mean, I hope people are clear about that. Things might improve dramatically or go down a little bit. Like, I don't know, like I'm not an analyst, but we're not going back. Just wanted to be clear about that. So even more so that the, you or me, all of us and, and, and our customers uh, are, are just having more and more buying power. We research, we are more and more prone to, to understand which are the fake news, fake reviews and all that. So when we get to that demo, we already know what we want in a way, right? Most of us. And I'm, gonna, I'm seeing that trend more and more um, happening. So where's the self-serve extreme personalization going in terms of a role? Well, it's going more in a direction of, uh, of a customer success and, and, and basically taking the quality of a customer success uh, and putting that hat on, on your head as, a, as an SDR or account executive or whatever your role might be in sales. So if you are the owner, think about this because I think this is super, super important. And we have some really taught leaders on customer success here in Toronto that you can, that you can follow. Um, now, you know, how many touches to generate a sale? Um, and, and this is something, you know, that, that I find interesting. In our case, we're really around the number of between 14 and 18 touch points. And what is a touch point? We'll see on the next slide, you know, the types of touch points. It can be a, a request on LinkedIn to connect. It can be, a, a, you know, a, a comment on Twitter. It can be a phone call. It can, it can be an email. So, so many different things. And, and a combination of these things will, uh, will, uh, or, or, or or testing the combinations of these things will actually help you find the best way to speed up your sales cycle, right? Because if you find your ICP ideal customer profile and the bar personas and start from there, you'll know where they spend time. I, for instance, in my case, 80%, if not 90% of my customers are very active on LinkedIn. So guess what? Go on my LinkedIn profile. I have 20,000 followers and I'm posting like a couple of times a week, not about auto close, but just giving value to my ICP. So that's a sort of a touch point. Um, an indirect touch point. And, and Brian, I know that, I mean, you have also a ton of experience in, in, in this. And you know, I'm just curious, like what's, how does this look for, for you and your business? Like, are you guys at around 14, 18, five? What's your kind of experience? You know, I would say definitely very directly through the years that it varies in the products, depending on where you're in. Like you said, in, if you're just purely technology, if it's a SaaS based product, you're definitely into probably the higher numbers like you're, you're definitely doing because you have a lot more tire kickers. 
um, you're definitely doing a lot of testing and I'll be the first one to admit um, I did exact same thing, testing out your product. I loved it. But again, you wanted to see, is this really going to be the right fit? And you're testing it and you're trying and you want to see. But then you, you start going down to if you're, again, depending on what you're selling, if you're using this technology or you're, you're selling something more tangible, maybe that will be something smaller. Maybe you're between six and eight touch points. If you're selling something that is maybe a technology piece, but a little bit of a hardware piece, maybe that is between eight and 12 points. But it really, really depends on the audience and it really depends on where the information is coming from. It is, a, is it a market qualified lead? Is it coming from something that you actively reached out and spoke to the client and done some research? So done a little bit more on the account-based marketing side where you actually identify the client first, you identify their needs, you know their wants, you know their pain points, you kind of did a little bit more research behind them and to identify what they want and, and who to speak to. I find at that point you can actually reduce your touch points, but however, it really depends on the product and actually the cost of the product as well. But I think you're definitely dead on. It really depends your industry and right. uh, what you're doing. Yeah, what's the, the average invoice value and all that? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, 100%. Um, so types of touch points, I mean, it can be anywhere from, you know, like uh, an email. We usually are auto close. We're a single channel, okay? So auto close is a single channel platform, so we only have email, but we are not uh, blind to see what's really working and where our customers are spending time because it's not about us, it's about them. Where can we find our, our prospects really? So, you know, usually it starts with the email number one, then there's a difference between email number one and two, and then there's usually a LinkedIn connection and an email. But before all that, right? Like you can, you can do voicemails, you can do SMS, any kind of part of social selling, even meeting on a conference. These are all touch points, right? If they see something from your marketing on, on any medium, that's a touch point. If they come and spend some time and sessions on your website, that's a touch point. So all these things are, are touch points. And the most important, that, like even we are guilty of that. I mean, spraying and praying, I mean, fine, if you're comfortable with it. I mean, sure, you know, you have a machine gun to just shoot. Okay. Um, what we're trying to do, as you saw in my campaign, I don't have thousands of people in there. I have 30. They're highly targeted. And, and funnily enough, you'll see later, you don't even have to personalize your email when it's highly targeted. Then these sentences that you're writing really resonate, but, uh, but we'll get to that. And so, so to me, the most important thing here where I'd like you to spend time or at least outsource it once you figure out that ideal customer profile, like I really want you to, 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 you know, to be focused on finding the right industries, the right niche, the right, the right company and the right decision makers in those companies. So that is actually the crucial part of the game. Um, so aligning your product with their, with their um, jobs to be done, uh, speaking in the product terms. Uh, now, we, we know it all, you know, like most people, like if you, if you really have, let's say if you have a, uh, this will be very relevant to you if you have a team of like at least five, six salespeople, you know, like, yes, you know, 66% of their day, they're, they're spending actually not selling. And, and this particularly is true uh, for, you know, for, for generations that experienced the first tech boom and even, even before that. So, you know, people are just, you know, writing these follow-ups, they're doing the data entry, they're just, you know, doing different things to, to, to make sure that, you know, they're prepared to make that sale, but they're actually not building those relationships. They're not actually out there in the field, uh, making sure that their pipeline is being built. And funnily enough, a lot of people talk about COVID and a lot of people talk about, you know, hey, my, my, my pipeline is empty. How can your pipeline be empty now when people are more than ever responsive to your calls, to your emails? And, and we've been experiencing like tremendous growth on the auto close side. And yes, we're a software company. Okay, fine, software companies did really well. So, okay, let's get that out of the room. But the point is people are answering phone calls people people are you know answering your sms like it's just you have to be out there and not be scared to really you know figure out you know how do we move from here you know is a shit show for you and for me like how do we move from here like you know how's our relationship going to look like in a few months from now you got to be asking those tough questions and putting yourself in tough situations in order to actually get something out of this and obviously you do this with empathy so you have to have the courage and that's from seven habits right you have to have the courage but you also have to be, you know, like um, you know, have the empathy to, to, to speak up. And, and that's, that's going to be the win-win, right? Like the, the segment where you're aiming at. So what can be successfully automated uh, from, from this, you know, previous slide? Writing follow-ups, data entry, researching leads, all that can be automated. And if there's one thing that you should take out from this webinar is that every sale happens in the follow-up. 
Maybe not true for the e-commerce folks, but I would think about it again, you know? Very, like, very true. Exactly, you know, I've seen your ad or you retargeted me or you sent me an email. Every sale happens in the follow-up. And funnily enough, guys, our platform is all about follow-ups. And you know what? I was trying to upsell a few clients a few days ago um, and I would log in and I would see that they don't have follow-ups. They have like five, six campaigns running and just one email going out. And I'm like, I was mind blown, but that is a real hurdle. People don't write a content and I'll tell you how to write a content without wasting a ton of time. And you'll see, I get better results with that. The sale happens in the follow-up, you know, following with prospects, following up with prospects, keeps you on top of mind. Follow-up could be a call, SMS, we talked about it. And, and you should structure your cadence or the follow-ups based on where the prospect is in the buying you know, process in the sales cycle, right? So again, make sure it makes sense to them, not to you. So that we should be clear about that. For instance, right now we're having the, the, the end of a fiscal year for auto close and because I built my uh, reputation with my clients, I'm open up, you know, and I tell them that it's really important to me, but I earned my right. But to begin with, you know, 70% of the time, try and give value. And how do you know what's valuable? Really legit question. I mean, you don't really know, so you make little assumptions. And again, how I like to think of this, it's a tennis match, guys. So like, you know, just imagine if I invite you for a tennis match, how that would go, right? Like, I mean, it's not like, and even if you accept and you join the, you know, you, you come to the field, I'm not gonna, you know, spam you with balls and hit you with balls. Like it's gonna be back and forth, back and forth. So why the hell do you write long ass emails? Why do you have to have thousands of words in an email? That's a blog post. I don't have time for that. Like you didn't earn my right, right? So 70% so of the time, keep adding value, you know, 30% of the time, try and sell. Um, and, and, you know, like don't ever, uh, you know, whine about not having a pipeline. Now is the best time to build a pipeline. How are you gonna push them through the pipeline? That's a whole other story. But uh, can I beat Sean Finder at tennis? Probably not. The guy was pro, okay? So probably not, but good question, Jim. Uh, so the, the funny question for you guys is, would you hold the wheel if you had the option not to, you know, uh, soon enough, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, getting a Tesla and, and, you know, I'm not gonna hold the wheel, you know, like I'm just gonna be chatting with you guys. Okay, so part one, the boring part. We start with the boring part. That's how we do demos. We start with the boring part. So if you get through the boring part, then we know you're the right customer. So marketing email versus sales email outreach. So what's the difference? Well, the technical aspect. So on the left-hand side of your screen, I hope it's left. Um, on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see a MailChimp email. Again, nothing against MailChimp. We love these guys. We use them for our marketing email. On the right-hand side, you can see the auto-close email. And what is the difference? Well, on the right-hand side, you can see an automated email personalized just with Justin, right? Just the first name, because to be honest, like I don't have a lot of time. I have my sales development reps and BDRs who are doing the, the, that part of the job. But when I do it, I usually personalize for the first name because I'm aiming at different assumption testing. So on the right-hand side, you can see it's mailed by autoclose.com, right? On the left-hand side, you can see that this is a typical marketing email who's, that's coming from, from different uh, servers uh, and there are pros and cons to that, right? Now, again, let's get the elephant out of the room can spam, this is American uh, law and, and you know, is called emailing legal. I know that we have a lot of Canadians here. I'm not gonna be answering Canadian uh, version of this. Very similar, but there are a few twists uh, and I don't want you to be holding me for a word. We can, we can have a chat about that. I can send you some more resources because it's really like, it's really, really questionable in Canada. But in US, it's pretty damn clear. Yes, you can call email in the States. Can you call the email using MailChimp? Nope. MailChimp will ban you. Can you do it using autoclose, outreach, other tools? Yes. Why? Because we facilitate sending emails on your behalf. So there's a personalized email that you're sending to someone else. It's just, it's structured in batches. That's what Google does. You can send later with Google, right? So it's the same kind of technical, technically it's the same logic. So you're just, instead of one email, you're doing 10, 20, 30, or maximum, at maximum 500 a day, which is a lot. And it's, it's it, you know, it's a big responsibility, but we're gonna get into that. So in order to be can spam compliant, you need to avoid deceptive subject lines, such as, um, you know, my, my 
uh, my grandpa from you know South Africa gave me two million that I want to distribute to you. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Like you get all these scam uh, subject lines. So so no no that don't do that. Provide a clear opportunity to opt out. In in our close we have three options. You can write a text. Uh, the worst option is to add a link unsubscribe me because. Why would you do it? Like, I mean, you're sending a personalized email. Like, they don't know that it's at scale, but you're sending a personalized email. So basically, uh, uh, you shouldn't, if you want, you can have it, but I never do. And then there's a third option, which is kind of invisible, at least for auto close. If someone says, please unsubscribe subscribe me, please remove me, et cetera, we have the AI system in the back that will figure out like what's, you know, what's the context of the email and will automatically put them to the not the email list. You're never gonna run into that uh, situation. Uh, be clear and honest about who and where you are. So have the address, have your first name, last name, you know, social links and all that. And clear value. What are you offering? Why, why, do you, why are you reaching out to me? Right? So that is, that is a very important, uh, very important piece of it. Like, you know, are you a real person? So that's, that's what you want to have. And if you ask us, we send all of our emails from autoclose.com. Okay. Marketing email hey, platforms. Sorry, sorry Brad. You, yes, 100%. Can you just answer a question directly from that Sarah had based on the, the 500 count on your first email? Okay, it's 500 count for first email only or all follow-ups as well in a campaign. So it's 500, 500 emails a day. So if you're going to split it into two uh, campaigns, three campaigns, it doesn't really matter. And then, and then uh, second day, if you do a follow-up, you have a fresh batch of 500 right? So every day you have 500 to, to, to send. And then obviously you have a bit more with Google. I think the limit is 2000, but we don't want to get there, right? We want to keep you at 500 so you're safe. Um, and obviously we, 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 when we are sending these emails, you know, let's say you schedule 50 to go out today. So the first one would go out, then we'd wait a minute, then the second would go out, then we'd wait 30 seconds, then the third would go, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to get into that. But so I hope I answered your question, Sarah. So, so, so marketing email platforms, there are some advantages like pros and cons, like anything else in life, right? There are pros and cons to, to, to all of us and to any and everything. So advantages, you can mass email thousands or even millions of people in a, in a minute. Well, if you have a rich list, uh, and you know, you, you, you keep having different marketing magnets, uh, attracting these emails out for sure. Uh, it's easy to design, you know, drag and drop thing, with, which MailChimp came, with, uh, came up with like a, a few years back, you know, so you can do these things. It's very easy to design. So you have HTML email, pretty nice, nicely designed. And then it's really great for newsletters and blogs. You know, people expect that type of, type of thing. Now, the disadvantages is you're sharing one server with multiple other users, right? So again, hundreds, you know, millions of emails are going out uh, every, every hour. Um, emails usually go into promotion marketing folder. If you have a high bounce rate, meaning, you, you know, you just acquired like in a very weird way, you know, your lists and, you know, a lot of people are, you know, are not used, utilizing their lists anymore and you have a high bounce rate, you're out. Cold emailing, one time, two times, three times, you're out. People will be asking, why am I on this list, right? For real. Uh, and, and this is not what, what marketing platforms are, are, are for. Um, now the marketing results again because you have a ton of uh, leads of, the, of that list, and especially if you if you have uh, uh, one star folks, two star fo folks, five star folks on, on that list, this is how your results are going to look like, right? You're going to be in 20 percent, 30 percent. Sometimes we get even 40 percent, right? So that's what you get, uh, but not more than that. I've never received more than 40 percent on marketing platforms. Now the sales email platforms. There are certain advantages. You know, you can automate your follow-ups, tedious tasks, just like I was talking about. You can personalize your outreach, which is which is the same for MailChimp, but the difference is you're sending this from your server, right? Like it's going from autoclose.com or whatever uh, your domain might be. Uh, targeted emails with a higher click click through rate, CTR, and reply rates. So you're going to see that in a little bit. And then there are some disadvantages. Realistically, you can send more than 500. You can send a thousand, but you're risking way too much. In the beginning, well, there's more time to set it up. If you used to send 10, 20 emails, and now all of a sudden you want to send 500, guess what? Google will be like, uh, what? You know, like the, the algorithms would be like, what the hell just happened? Someone took over your account because you were sending 10 across days and months, and now all of a sudden you're saying 500. So you're going to be blocked for 24 hours. Okay, so that is a disadvantage. So that's why we warm you up properly and, and you can go from, from, from 510 to 500 just like that. So it'll take you like probably a few weeks, like three to four weeks to ramp up your account. 
Now the sales results, and it's, it's an obvious difference, right? On the left-hand side, you can see I have 55 leads, 134, um, and, and you basically see what the result is. And funnily enough, you could say, hey, but these are not sales emails, man. Like it says ebook this, ebook that. Fine, yes. However, same emails are inside AutoClose, same emails are inside MailChimp and look at the open rates. Why? Because it's more personal um, and it doesn't go to the promo promo inbox. So there is, that's, that's a huge difference. Now, why email? I'm not gonna get too much into this. I'm just gonna say something that a CEO of SendGrid said. And again, another great platform, SendGrid. Uh, email is a channel that will outlive us all. So no one owes it owns it in theory, like we are getting more and more people reinventing email such as hey.com, they just launched yesterday or two days ago. Uh, so com like a completely new uh, premium email competitor to Gmail and, and, and other folks, um, you know, it's still our Id identifier of choice, you know, and people change, you know, people mostly change their, their physical address more often than their, than their email address and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, it made the jump from, from desktop to mobile and, and there's lots of other benefits of, of email and why email. Okay, that's the boring part. Now we're getting to a fun part. How to write the perfect email sequence. Uh, and what is an email sequence? Well, it's a series of follow-ups uh, follow-up emails uh, that are automatically sent to a specific segment and that's the key a specific segment. So if you start blasting people, well, guess what? You're not going to be successful. So automated series of emails. Why series? Well, because follow-ups are important and every sale happens in the follow-up. So I'll keep re reiterating to that. And you want to send it to a specific segment, right? So your goal is to get the engagement. Remember, remember tennis. And again, I can't beat Sean Finder at tennis. He, the guy was a pro. So remember tennis. Like you're inviting people for the engagement back and forth. You want to have fun. Same thing with sales. Like you're inviting people to say yes, no. Everything counts in a reply, in a click on a demo, in a click on a video. All these things count because you can't expect people to say, yes, I'm in. I want to buy. Give me that because it's not going to happen. You have to build trust, right? If you're doing cold email outreach. So back and forth, quick back and forth. Is it time consuming? Well, then yes. I mean, you know, there's no hacks here. <laughs> Brian, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, cool. So, so um, email sequence. Well, th these are parts of your email sequence that you have to keep in mind. So, you first thing you want to do, very, very fun. I know that this is very fun. So, configure your SPF, DKIM, and DMARC records. God damn it, what's that? Well, that's something that me, I'm not a developer, I'm not a technical guy, but I know where my DNS is, where my domain is hosted. So, to me, it was half an hour of work to set this up for my other business. But for you guys, you probably want to go to someone technical to GoDaddy or whoever you want to help you set up the SPF DCAM and DMARC records because they're super important for, for all the players. When I say players, I mean algorithms like Google, Yahoo, uh, Office 365, Outlook, all these guys to know that you're real. Let's, let's keep it at that. Um, you want to warm up your domain. So if, you're just, if you just bought uh, that dot com, whatever, uh, domain, you want to warm it up. Because if you start sending emails immediately out, well, most of them will go to spam. So you want to start exchanging the emails with your colleagues, family members, or whoever you want, subscribing to newsletters, just regular activity that you'd usually do, right? So it's everything is pretty, it's, it's common sense, guys, right? If you think about it. And then there's subject line, there's body, there's multimedia, there are call to actions or the CTAs signature, follow-ups, and reporting. So all these are some segments of your email sequence. We're gonna dive deeper into those. Um, let me just share my screen real quick. Uh, stop sharing, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you something real quick. Um, share my screen again, desktop two, and I wanna show you this. Okay, this is actually perfect. So let me just get out of this. And that. Alrighty. So there's. Um, I hope you, Brian. Can can you see my screen now? Uh, okay. Perfect. So there's a there's a company called. We're not affiliated with them in, in you know in any way. It's called MailTester.com, um, and you can basically test the spamminess of your of your email, right? So 
if you look at my spam results, it's 9.5 out of 10. And I can still fix some of the things. I, I don't want to click on this because you'd be able to see some, some uh, DMARC records and all these things. But uh, as you can see, overall, I'm good to go. There are a few things that I need to fix with the content of my email, but the technical aspects are all fixed. So what I want you to do after this webinar, choose any email of, of, that, that you want. Just click copy and send your email to this this address, right? This weird address, and then check your score and you'll see what I'm talking about. So if you have DMARC and all these SPF records set up, you're good to go. If not, well, don't ask me why your email is ending up in spam. Okay, uh, see my presentation? Okay, perfect. Um, let's start presenting again. So um, so that, that's really important, so you know, um, to avoid spam, I'm skipping some slides because you're going to get all these slides and I'm going to, you know, um, stuff them up with some other useful, useful links and, and all that. So to avoid spam, you know, your email should not be jammed with images or videos, quite self-explanatory. We're huge fans of video uh, and we use a company called Vidyard, Canadian company uh, that powers up, you know, like Salesforce, HubSpot and all these guys. Um, and, and, but don't use your, your video in your first email. Can I get up in spam? So you have to build that trust. Even the algorithms are telling us that we have to build that trust. Uh, you know, keep the number of your links in your email to two to three. If you ask me, keep them up to two. So in my signature, you'll see later on, I have, I have um, autoclose.com. So people know who the hell am I or where I'm you know, coming in from. And there's usually one call to action in my body of, of my email. And you don't wanna have more than two spam words. Guess what? Free spam word. Get now spam phrase or word. Um, um, uh, whatever else could be like it's just weird things, and we have it in our platform. So have in in a in a certain uh, constellation can be can be a, a, a spam word. So have these things in mind. I'm just gonna go back to participants and uh, chat here. Okay, Brian, you tell me if there's any question. Um, or if you want to jump in. So I have actually, actually have a little pool for you guys. Um, when and where do you read your emails? I'm going to try and initiate it right now. Um, launch the poll. Okay. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you like five, 10 seconds. So you can see on your, on your computers, there's a, there's a questionnaire that says, where do you read your emails most of the time? I'm not talking like all the time, but like, you know, most of the time, where do you read them? Okay. I'll give you like 10 more seconds. This will be an interesting poll. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll end this. Um, and so where do you read uh, your emails most of the time? You know, people are saying 42% are saying laptop, 32% are saying mobile phone, meaning on the go. And we have a few people like, actually not a few, but we have 25% on the desktop. Um, so so that's, that's basically where we are at. Uh, but what I'm, what I'm seeing more and more often, like, I mean, I just, with all these things, guys, like you, you always look, uh, if you do marketing, if you do anything, sales, like you start with yourself, like, would you like this to, you know, happen to you? Or where do you read emails? You know, in my case, I, it's mostly always uh, on a mobile phone. Even now when I'm at home, you know, just before this webinar, I went up and down the stairs, just my regular exercise routine. And guess what? Most of the, 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 the emails I answered on the phone, right? It just speeds you up. So, What's the, you know, what's behind this? Well, why do you send long emails? Like, like my emails, you, you don't even have to scroll. You can just open it up. Sometimes you can even see what I mean in, in a preview. And that's how you're gonna get the tennis match. You're not gonna get the tennis match if, you know, uh, Novak Djokovic or Federer come to, to challenge you, you know, like, I mean, you know, it's just, if, you, if you're scared by, by a number, by a length of text and, 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 you know, like all these links and things like, guys, like even if I'm in this business, I'm just gonna mark you as spam. Like, I mean, like stop wasting my time, right? Okay. Copywriting. Copywriting, super important here. Like, I mean, extremely important. And, and right as you talk, like this is like, I keep seeing this, you know, like people just use jargon, you know, they use these nice and polite words. And most of the cases, I don't care if you're prospecting, you know, against startups, if you're prospecting against the enterprise folks, they're all human beings. And, you know, for sure you can admire someone's skills to communicate in a really nice way, but it's just, you know, keep it simple. Like, you know, keep it very, very simple and the shorter, the better, right? 
the one thing that I want you to remember here is the purpose of the subject line is to open up the email. The purpose of the first sentence is to make you read the second. So keep that in mind. There are a couple of things uh, that, that, that are just interesting just as a spam word, but creates urgency. So if you have one per email, that's just fine, right? But if you just just your email, well, you're gonna end up in spam. Learn, discover, we know that creates curiosity. PS, I love PS. I'm just skipping, obviously, you can read that for yourself. But PS, very cool. So what I like to do in my email, so in the first, e uh, first paragraph, there is a call to action. Um, how do you say that? Um, not highlighted, but like it's, I, I paste the link on top of the, the sentence or the word and I'm bold in it. And then I reiterate the call to action in a PS because guess what? Inside articles, people are like, no one's replying to me. Like I don't get, well, I don't see your ask. I don't see the call to action. Like what the hell do you expect, <laughs> right? So, uh, and, and like nothing beats new or now or, you know, fear of missing out. You know, uh, these are these are like, uh, as I say here, the second most powerful word words. Uh, when I do that in a subject line, whether for marketing or sales, like people just click like, you know, uh, users want to see what's new uh, and everyone else, you know, they want to know what's free, what's now, what's available, you know, so the combination of these things could, could really help. And again, this is this was written by Howard uh, HBR.org, org, um, I think in 2010. So way back when, right? So at your earliest convenience, like, I mean, come on, as soon as you can, right? Uh, we are in receipt of, we've received. So thank you for your courtesy and cooperation regarding this matter. Just say thank you or thanks, right? I mean, just, and, and again, think about where we're headed as a society. Like, you know, attention span sadly is going down. I mean, not sadly, it is what it is. I mean, we'll see what, what the long-term consequences of that will be, but it, it, you know, it's going down definitely. Um, so why writing long emails? Um, you know, people are more and more texting each other, WhatsApp, this, that, right? So why writing thank you for your courtesy and cooperation regarding this matter? Just say thank you, thanks. Like that's what people are used to. Now the subject lines, uh, and I, again, guys, you don't have to agree with this. Like some of some for some of the stuff, I have a real specific data to prove. For the others, I mean, I just don't. And it, I behave, you know, when you get me on a phone or you get my email, you're gonna see a, a, a clear line alignment between those actions. So that's what I want. But I don't know what's your goal. Your goal might be to impress someone with with a great vocabulary. Sure. I'll just make one inter interaction yes. or inter interjection right now because I mean Sarah's yeah. mentioned something right now as a lead gen company that her, her emails tend to be a little bit longer and they tend to outperform and it really depends on mm. the on the context. What are you, you selling? Are, do you have to be a little bit more descriptive? Sometimes you do need the description like right. you mentioned before you need that call to action or that trigger to pull them in in the beginning and you need that call to action at the, at the end yeah. to, to, to rope them back in because you want them to do something else. 100%. And let me tell you, like, I prefer short subject lines. But mm -hmm. uh, when we did the first analysis in 2019, because we had a lot of data from different clients, uh, the aggregation turned out that the longer the subject line, the, the better the open rate. Weird, wow. right? But, uh, but still, in my personal case, uh, and that's across the industries, right? In my personal case, first name plus, you know, sender's name uh, reminded me of you, quick favor, early stage sales team, like these types of kind of short uh, subject lines really work well. Um, Okay, so first name, do you handle X? You know, uh, John suggested I reach out. Interesting, right? A bit lengthy, but, but interesting. Um, another one that I really like here is hashtag, this is just a whole cold email. So, so uh, <laughs> my buddy and, and, and colleague at, at Autoclose, like Adrian did that. Um, so it's, uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool. So then also adding uh, reply or RE, two dots, right? Your, uh, your yearly uh, X, Y, Z or whatever target at Autoclose. Right, so those things are, you know, really when you have forward uh, reply, people seem that, you know, it's a little gimmick, yes, yes, 100%, but it helps you to get the open rate. Again, so you have to play on a thin balance, uh, you know, between, uh, between just being too pushy, too salesy and actually achieving your goal and, and still staying true to yourself. Okay, so in the body of an email, you can do different things, right? So you could, you could personalize this and be like, uh, and by the way, this is called like a standard problem agitate solve type of, type of um, a strategy. So, you know, John on average, you know, B 
people struggle with this and that in your niche, you know, is your company achieving its goals, right? Like your personalized company pain point and first name, this can all be personalized, right? Across the, again, it is a lot of work, but still way less than just doing mundane tasks and doing it one by one. Then, you know, most team stats is this, these are the benefits and this is how our company can help you solve the problem, right? And then alternatively, if you could add the referral or something and just ask for, for yes or no, like, you know, here we say it would be great to connect for a 50 minute call next week. Well, if there's a cold email, like too big of an investment, just say this, is this relevant? Yes, no. I learned that from Chris Voss, the, the FBI negotiator, like, you know, he's really into that, like give them the opportunity to say no. Right, so it's it's kind of really useful. Uh, then there's before after bridge. You know, Sean, I noticed that you, that your SDR positions are open for quite some time. Okay, true. I'm going to read the second line. It's hard to find the right person to do the job, and the lead gen suffers. And again, this is all about them. And if you could portray a bit, even a bit more, what they're going through, if you have a good lead on that, I mean go for it, right? Because it's not about you, it's about them. I would love to show you how articles can remove that burden. Wow, okay, I'm listening. We already helped Software Inc. and Google, right? Making their number one rep feels like a 10, 10 people sales force. Would you like to discuss how we can help you too? So I'm not talking about a software here. I'm not talking about anything. It's just like, I have a really good way to solve this and I, I've proved to be successful. And this is a lengthy email. Uh, there are lots of things that I dislike about this one, but the subject line is hashtag, this is just a cold email, and then there's the result. Would you like your calendar to be like this, you know, or, or you know, filled out, booked with demos as mine? And I would just do that and the screenshot. Like, and if I'm in sales, like, I'm like, fuck, man, I'm listening. Okay, spam words. Now free are all spam words and you wanna have the software that marks that as a spam word. Uh, so if you have more than two spam words, more than two links, guess what, you're in spam. Uh, what media is most likely to elicit a reply or to get you uh, uh, kind of stand out from the crowd? Well, it seems that one-to-one -one video and LinkedIn are probably the best that you can get. Um, and like I said, we use, we use video continuously as part of our sequences and brand, like what's, what's your kind of experience? Like I'm putting you on a spot again, this is not prepared, but like, do you use video and, and like, do you have any, any results with it? I mean, I, I'm definitely a fan of Vidyard's products. So I definitely love using video, but like you said, you, you pepper the video directly within your sequences and it really depends on what your audience is. I personally, because I'm, I'm more or less B2B, if I'm using that as a way to validate a point or I'm using that as more of a relationship to build that relationship, definitely. I personally don't like it um, as a way on my first early interactions. I've seen that directly with other sales reps and I can see them being really cute and being fun. That's not my personality. I like the, I like the relationship first and I like to go in with that. But I like the video as the relationship builder later on for myself personally. Right, and it's a bell curve, right? We're currently like at the stage where, you know, just the innovators are really kind of using it and pivoting and testing it and, and all that. But we'll see if it crosses chasm, you know, like from, from the book, uh, the same name, you know, we'll see if the, the mass adoption will be there. But I, I see the video is, 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 you know, playing an important role. Like we have Loom, we have Vidyar that we use. So I think, you know, even using it in your first outreach in nurturing in, in the end of cadence, I think it's really useful. Um, and, and like, again, just do like 10, 15 seconds, like 10 seconds. And inside, inside articles will give you the reporting, like how much of the video they watch. Guess what? If I do one, two minutes, no one watches past like 30 seconds. That's the best I got. So like, like why even struggling? Like just do a phone and record it on the spot. Like just, hey, that here, uh, have you checked my, you know, email talks about this, this and that and, or whatever, like this is probably not a good liner, but, uh, but something of that sort. Yeah, now the, the, only, to, yeah, go the ahead. only thing I'd add directly to that as well, I mean, again, the beauty of what you guys have direct with AutoClose is the fact you can test, run your A-B test, you know, try it, try with a few people, see what your response rate is. See right. if you're going to get, you know, get the response that you're really looking for. And again, if right. it is a good response, great. If you don't get a good response and you're not, not comfortable with it, don't do it. Right. hundred percent. Exactly. It has to be aligned with, with you and your values and how you do things. Now call to action. Like I said, Come on guys, like don't ask me why is your email not successful if you don't have a call to action? Like what's the call to action? Like is it yes, no? Is it a request to connect? Is it a referral? What is it? Just just ask something, right? And and after you earn your right to ask, you know, be specific with a date and time. You know, like this just good old like, you know, gimmick like 
do you do it's not a gimmick it's actually psychological very behavioral so like do, do, do you prefer tuesday or, or wednesday you know like just letting them think about those two so it's a good old thing you know but uh, again you can reiterate your value prop you know uh you can give them your calendar to book something on your calendar i pre preferred that one because it weighs the least you know the least amount of time on both sides uh but sometimes can be too much so so play around with this and, and again like test humor that's that's pretty cool you know people are just too being too serious and I, i'm guilty of that um okay the signature like i said keep it clean and simple in my case there's one link here only realistically, and that's autoclose.com and that's it. There are no links in here because I wanna use the second credit for the links in my body of the email, right? Like, like, I, like I said, and you can add the unsubscribe, you can add all these things, but again, I don't do it. Like there are no unsubscribe. Like if you really wanna unsubscribe, you can tell me that. And even then, if they say, you know, F off, I'm not interested, please remove me from the list and all that kind of stuff, uh, our system will mark them as, as, the, as the do not email, and even then, after 24 hours, I want you to go back and be like, hey, you can't fault me for trying. You know, there's a reason why I reached out and this, this, and that. Uh, and again, I apologize. And what happens then out of those 10 that said, said F off, like two to three percent, uh, two to three, two, 20 to 30 percent. So two to three people re respond back with a positive answer. So, you know, people are just having a bad day. You're not on their mind and you shouldn't be, right? Like, I mean, so just don't, don't take it personal, right? Um, you know, add as many follow-ups, like figure out what's your sweet spot, um, you know, follow-ups. Ben, I wanted to circle back on my email below regarding setting out to close up with a free trial. Are you free for a 15 minute demo this week? This probably has two, two spam words, which is free and trial. So three, right? So you have to change something. John, if a demo seems too big of a commitment, watch auto close in action, just record a demo. P.S. You too will be able to send video emails as I can et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, another very, very interesting one actually that I wanna go over is I understand this might not be for you at this time. Do you mind helping me understand why? No budget, A, no budget, B, using a competitor, C, I don't you know, need more sale, D, bad timing. So you're really trying to understand you know, what's, the, what's, the, what's the thing that you're missing. And at the bottom of that email, I'm like, let's just be friends on LinkedIn. This is my LinkedIn profile. So let's you know, stay in touch because I don't care. Like, I don't want you to, to, to make a sale now. I mean, sometimes, yes, I do. But most of the time, I don't. You know, there's, it's just the, 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 the nature of our business is like, we want you to be engaged when it's the right time. We want you to, to you know, say, this is the right company. This is the right team that I want to bet on. Um, reporting, there are multiple reports that you have with these platforms for that I really like, you know, you have campaign reports, sequence email reports, account reports, team reports, and all that. These are very, very important ones, right? So this would be a campaign report inside AutoClose, but it's, it's a pretty standard one, right? Like if, if you're the first time you're seeing something like this, you know, how many leads in a campaign, how many sent open click reply rates. And then at the bottom, we at AutoClose, we give you, we give you a detailed breakdown of, of, of each reply. So you can see that out of nine replies, four positively engaged, one said, you know, I'm not interested, one unsubscribed, and three were out of office. So what do you do with those? They replied back, but it's an automated reply. Well, you select them and return them back into a campaign. That's a good question Sarah is asking. So what happens to triple O do you put back? Yes, you put them back in, uh, Sarah, um, and, and, um, and the system will continue sending exactly where they left which is, which is kind of cool. Uh, this is a detailed breakdown. So you can see how each email is doing. You can see the AB test and the winners of AB tests. And this is the main dashboard, which is updated real time, which tells you, you know, daily open rates, hourly open rates, and when's the best time to, to conduct your emails. But I'm skipping this because again, the, anyway, this, this, not, this not, shouldn't be a problem. So real life example, this, this is now important. So um, this is one of the campaigns that I'm doing. Um, and if you see, if you look at this, the screen, you can see that my second or the first follow-up, but my second email gets the best reply rates. And you can see that my third email gets the most clicks, right? And the question is why? Well, check out my, my second email. Subject line is reply, uh, Brian, let's talk. Brackets, vet, and some weird emoji. Yeah, millennials and all that. Okay, so the body, the body of an email, quick cue. Question, right? I'm being a brainiac. Uh, quick Q, who is your ideal customer profile? Thanks, Vet. Now, <clears throat> what's interesting about this, it's very easy to respond to, right? It's, it's just very, very easy to reply to this. And again, think about the ICPs and buyer personas and all that. 
people are pre-qualified, meaning I spend my time and I, I've done my due diligence. And when, without any personalization, this is what gets me a lot of replies. Why? Because I ask for minimum engagement, right? And people like talking about themselves. Like another, another really good thing that we have is, you know, we usually ask you if we see that you're a director of sales in a company in, in the States, we usually say, hey, do you manage the East Coast or the West Coast? And yes, some people are like, dude, like just bitch me. It happens, but a lot of people, like I'll tell you, like we get 60, 70% reply rates to that. It's just, it's a natural way of the conversation discussion. And this is my second email. So guess what? If I just send quick cue, who's your ideal customer profile? Yes, you can see my image, you can see the name, you can see the email, uh, sure. But I created a so-called trading effect. So they can see my first email as well. Bob, thanks for finishing. I chat with my team the other day. I'd be more than happy to book a demo. Uh, sound good, let's talk. Again, reiterating the call to action. Then there's the, the thing, who the hell is this guy, right? So I'm, I'm reiterating, I'm piggybacking on my, my previous email. On the right-hand side, do you know that personalized video in an email will increase your click-through rate by two to three times. Want to learn more? More? Let's talk, right? And there's just the video, and that's what gets the most clicks. And this video is like 10 seconds. So you don't have to personalize as long as you respect their time and you've done your due diligence, meaning researching them. Although my SDRs will take something from your LinkedIn profile and build a case based on that. But like, I mean, you know, most of the time, uh, whether I don't have time or I'm just lazy or, you know, whatever, but I have these different methodologies the way, the way I do them. So learning by doing, right? You'll read this for yourself. I'm not going to get into it. Um, you can, you can, you know, just, just l l look at all these mistakes. Um, but I want you to do these things and you'll be fine. So keep your emails targeted, do your due diligence, keep it short and sweet, like tennis match, right? Like don't bombard them like with balls, like immediately have a call to action, like just have it please and follow up. That's the beauty of it. You have to follow up. Like if you don't follow up, like what's the point? How to build a targeted list, I'm just gonna skip through again. Uh, we're we're at top of the hour, and and I apologize about this, but but again, this is we can talk on and on about this to give you the tools and and all that. But the the ICPs, you know, the goal of this is to disqualify poor prospects as soon as possible, and to find great prospects. That's 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 your aim. Um, so I love when my teams teammates, sorry, are putting um, putting like deals in lost. Like that's what I want. Like I you know just disqualify as soon as possible. <clears throat> Smart targeting, well, likelihood of winning and, and, and you know, revenue potential. Our buddies, uh, friends at, at Predictable Revenue, they came up with this a while ago. Um, and you know, I just wanna breeze through this. Six options to build your, your list. You own a database and inbound leads, leads that's the best, right? Like you, you get these leads and that's perfect. If you wanna do predictable revenue, if you want to have the predictable process, well, you cannot always lean on your marketing. So sometimes you have to also acquire different databases. And now the worst thing that you can do is to spam your SDRs and account executives to go and look for emails, phone numbers, and all that. That's the worst thing you can do. There are better things. You can either acquire a vendor, work with a vendor, you can outsource it, you can, you can do you know, in-house slash uh, you know, uh, external software, so rent a software that does it for you, but just don't do it in-house fully because you're just gonna waste a lot of time. S waste a lot of time on picking ICPs and testing your hypothesis, but don't waste time on, 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 on actually figuring out uh, who to go after. Validation, super important, you know, 30, 30 contacts make up a 30 CRM, so you wanna validate. And the most important thing, like at, this, the, at the end, um, you know, no single channel, just email just cold calls, just this, just that. No single channel will effectively target all of your audience uh, at every stage of the buying cycle. So you have to be, uh, you know, kind of personalize it and, and, and be a bit more, um, be more specific. Now, final, just a couple of last things, you know, I'm not gonna, this is not a promotional, this is a training webinar. So if you like what we do, this, we cover most of this inside our software. So yes, uh, you know, it's end of our fiscal year. Yes, we're giving discounts and all that, but this doesn't matter. Uh, I, I'm really proud that my team ended up, like we're a bootstrap self-funded company from Toronto, Canada, and we are in top 50 sales products on G2 Crowd, the best software awards for 2020. That's a big thing for, for my team. And, you know, I just, would like to publicly tap ourselves on the back. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of resources on autoclose.com, which we'll send, uh, send over uh, in no time. So Brian, uh, what's your um, take on this? And, you know, 
what worked for you, what, what hasn't in all these um, uh, campaigns? I'll, I'll definitely say one thing as an out-of-close customer, and the, the one thing that I've really, really enjoyed is the simplicity of the software. And again, I'm not here just to hawk the software or hawk anything else. It was more for the fact of getting people to understand, like, the, like you said in the title of this whole webinar, it's the power of the email and it's the power of the outreach. If you can understand how to attract the attention and not bombard people with a whole bunch of gobbledygook and just get to the point, I think that is the power. And by ut utilizing some of these automation tools that just like AutoClose and some of the other tools that are out right, there, 100%. I think that would definitely streamline a lot of headaches a lot of small business owners have. And right. the, the, the other thing I'll definitely say is for anybody who's on this webinar, webinar check out AutoClose when it comes down to your resources. They are top notch. I mean, sign up for some of the eBooks. I mean, it'll definitely give you some training, get some in, good insights. And again, I'm not here just to hawk it, but I'm telling you, it, it's, it's, it's very valuable. I appreciate it, Brian. And, and, and likewise, I mean, what you're doing for the, for the Toronto community and, and, you know, kind of expanding even, even, uh, you know, abroad mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, to the United States, I think you guys are at, at something like really awesome. And the community, community is amazing. Uh, you know, just v visit the website, go to, go to meetup.org. Uh, and, and, you know, find Brian and, and connect. He's uh, one hell of a guy. And, and, you know, we just like, it's not because he's our customer, but it's just <laughs> relationship is just amazing. You're, you're a great guy. And, uh, and yeah, we, uh, love, we love yeah. startups. We love helping them any way we can. If it comes down to just relationships right. or helping mentor them or right. just pointing them in the right direction. And I think that's really what we're all about. 100%. Guys, if you have any last minute questions, we're at the top of the hour. Sorry, Brent. Just if That's anyone it. has any, any last last minute question, we're going to answer it now. If not, we're going to slowly um, end this webinar. Perfect. Take care, guys. Any, okay. Take care, guys. Thank you so much. Bye now.